right, what's up you guys? Uh, I'm going to read another chapter of uh, this here book right here. And, um, yeah, the background noise here, um, I hope it ain't too distracting when I play this back. I don't know how my other readings have worked out. A um, few feet behind me there on the, behind the wall is actually an the big old AC unit that's all fenced in, a big giant one that runs this whole building because it's summertime now, it goes on and off. So hopefully the background noise in this video isn't too distracting because, damn, I'm going to be hearing all this I, the whole damn time. I might have to find a better place to read, but all right. Next chapter, Business Scams. Well, it's a chapter with like subtopics, and uh, we're going to just do it in... Uh, different videos because it's actually, uh, I'm not going to do the whole thing, I'm going to take it piece by piece because it can be pretty long ass video, but I already had things in this that were like 20 minutes long and shit or damn near a half hour long. So the next subtopic is, uh, we're stealing from you from your own, we're stealing from you for your own good, guaranteed success at your expense. Growing rich, growing nothing. How civil servants become the civil civilian's master. Trust in me. It's like a rather sarcastic title. Uh, trust in me. Them there uh, sounds uh, goes hand in hand with the one other chapter I read. It was called "Be Nice to Me and I Will Make You a Star." Yeah. But anyway, we're going to do the first chapter before the chapter that we're stealing from you for your own good. I'm going to put that in the next video. Okay, in the bold uh, title here, Business Scams. Nader's Raiders and news shows featuring consumer advocates. Ah, hell. Man, you hear that? That's pretty damn loud. That sounded like it was pretty low. All right. I'm going to play that back, see how loud it got in this video. Jesus Christ, that was damn loud. Just as I was going to start reading. Um, sometimes I even hear horns, big trucks beeping, and different things when I try it. Almost like something something uh, is passive-aggressive and doesn't like what I'm reading or what I'm saying, because a lot of other times it's relatively quiet around here until I start. Believe it or not, because of the pandemic. But uh, All right, let's start this again. Uh, Nader's Raiders and news shows featuring consumer advocates like Betty Furness on WNBC in New York have done a lot in creating accurate appraisals of product performance as well as uncovering, as well as, uh, hold on, I almost lost my place, as well as uh, uncovering a number of illegal schemes. Well, if you remember any of these shows in WNBC, this book is written like over 20 years ago, so a lot of the shows on CNN and all your news channels. But if any of you guys look these up or maybe get old YouTube videos, make a reference, a lot of you people that look at all the political people on YouTube, this would be up your alley anyway. So, all right, Nader's Raiders and news shows. Featuring consumer advocates like Betty Furness on WNBC in New York have done a lot in creating accurate appraisals of product performance as well as uncovering a number of illegal schemes. Well, those other programs, well, we've got a lot other kind of programs on now that are similar to that. Yeah. Yet much of the larger sh sh shenanigans goes undetected because the companies are involved in are extremely well known, integral elements of the establishment that operate legally. Well, I made sarcastic separate videos separate from this reading. A lot of the shit you see on TV, phony ass insurance, uh, everything from colonial pen to car shield. And, well, I didn't even make a separate video I should make up on Aflac. Why the fuck would you need Aflac? It's all over the place. When that money you put in, are they really going to pay when you're off, like, like your employment or whatever, uh, whether you're uh, Workman's comp does or whatever, or pay your bills. Why well, get fucking Aflac when really, or Car Shield, like I said too, with that little bit of money you can save it in the fucking bank. And they're trying to uh, scam you and say, you put this much in and you're going to get all of this, whether it's life insurance or insurance for your car, Car Shield, or injury insurance like Aflac. Yeah, yeah, that goes on. I've 
made sarcastic videos separately about that to laugh at because I see it on TV. It makes you want to throw a fucking brick at the TV screen, insulting people's intelligence. And meanwhile, people highly, more highly educated than you and me. I, there was, I think it's a taboo. Are they really that stupid to hire people? Hire people that are well more educated, well, way more well spoken than you and me, well versed using the fancy words, more educated. Are they really? Um, you know what I mean? They defend the shit, you know what I mean? They can't be stupid. There's some kind of taboo. People more educated, more well-versed, well-spoken, more articulate, more uh, used in fancier words. The conversation with you and me that they throw you off is you'd have to hope the tab to... If you have conversation, you guys... Pause for a second. Can I look up this word? Why don't you use a simpler word? Just say, you know... Uh, anyway, people more highly educated than you and me uh, the ones that defend that shit, they really believe that shit. Obviously, maybe they're not stupid per se. There's a taboo that, you know, the more high educated, they're, they actually are supposed to believe in it. Almost like, you know, going to a certain church and questioning certain theological things. You know, um, you know what I mean? Like, uh, almost like when Christianity, we were for Jesus, right? And, uh, and then yet, uh, people in the real richer churches and TV and then, uh, actual churches you go to seem to glorify the uh, uh, prehistoric sacrificial dogma. Wait a minute, I thought uh, Jesus took care of that. Well, it's the same thing. Like, I'm, well, anyway, my argument is like a religion, you know. Well, people that are in religion are more articulate than you and around you and maybe your workplace and all that. They defend the shit. And they believe in the shit because... You know, it's some kind of taboo. You, you're in a certain culture. You don't go against it. That's what I'm saying. And if you don't go against it, you're just morally, socially, psychologically deranged or some kind of asshole if you don't. But there's some kind of rule that you believe shit. That's why this... That's, this is extra shit on my part, extra sarcasms, instead of making a dull-ass reading surprise you here and there. Well, after you read a couple of my readings, you'll probably know that I'm going to spout out some stuff. So, all right, on with what I was going to say. And, okay, right on with the rest of the reading. For example, Robert Ringer describes the legitimate scam of using your money interest-free. He says the security deposits on rental property is an old favorite. Well, there's, there's sometimes, too. Some landlords are nicer if you make a lot of effort you know, to keep clean, you get it back. And so there are some, like, uh, family members, relatives, and friends that they had everything ship shape when they were moving and they found a way to not give it back. You know, it varies. You know, you get a lot. I don't know what the percentage is, but, yeah, a lot of times, you know, they find, some will find a way to not give you it back. And some are nicer than do, to be fair. Um, you figure the slum lords, you know, or, uh, sometimes the apartments are like that, you know. Already, I know. But anyway, uh, let's get back to the read. He says the security deposits on rental property are an old, old favorite. Another is an a non-interest bearing checking account, checking account that bears no interest. In fact, banks usually make you pay a service charge for allowing them to use. Uh, excuse me, for allowing them to have free use of your money. Well, there's different advertisements on banks that are competing with each other now, and they'll, for you know, every couple years, uh, a certain bank will actually quit charging a certain service charge or charge you another charge. Give it a couple years, they, you know, they don't, uh, some of them are now, if you have something that's going to bounce by accident, they give you a few days grace period and get it in and you won't be charged. Then, you know, um, later on, you know, other banks, you know, take over and they'll do a service charge again. You know, I remember I used to have a bank account, like, if you go under a certain minimum amount, they charge you per month, or some of them find a way to charge you monthly maintenance fee anyway. Yeah, well, anyway, you know what I mean, but I'm being sarcastic, you know. Let's get on with the reading. Yeah. The big corporations, of course, are the best players of this game. In parentheses, the cash flow game which is one of the reasons they were able to get so big in the first place and remain big. They are also most adept at camouflaging how they pull it off. Well, they will for a while, and then after a while, gradually a little bit of time through TV and other kind of means, 
to practically tell you right under your nose, you know, like, you know, like, sometimes if people are face to face, you know, they tell you, they, they camouflage their intentions, and gradually they start letting it out a little bit at a time, you know what I mean, but it's what they're doing nowadays. The idea, the idea is to use just as few dollars, just as a, the idea is to use just a few dollars from thousands or preferably millions of customers. This is not too noticeable to the individual, particularly when disguised as something as like as a top deposit, but to a giant corporation, it can mean the interest free use of millions of dollars. So actually a little bit of here out of everybody's accounts. They're borrowing it like you don't know. It's Nowadays, they're fucking stealing it. You know what I mean? Uh, a lot of other stuff that you can go and look for and read about. So, yeah, but... Um, but, like, you steal, like, little amounts. A little bit at a time, nobody notices. It starts... It went... Actually, it went from borrowing to actually outright stealing, you know. But the American... But the American Express Company is one of the few that talks about it openly. That's because it's virtually uh, their whole business. So, so unlike everybody else who conceals it, American Express flat out tells you. I don't know. I know you'd have to look up American Express now to see what they still are doing, or variations of what they're doing if they're still doing the same thing. Or morphed so or modified versions like that. Yeah, this book is a little older, but I love the concept of this book. You know, like I said uh, before, it could be some outdated information. Some stuff is still true, you know what I mean, and changed it a little bit, and then maybe they're doing the same thing about steroids, you know, 20 years later, you know. That's why I feel like that they ought to, the author ought to come out with an updated version of this book. I imagine he could, but... All right, so... Yeah, you have to look up the American Express Traveler checks now, you know. They bluntly refer to it as the float. Here is how it works. American Express sells travelers checks to you, knowing that an advantage of 65 days will elapse between the time you give them your money and the time you cash the traveler's checks. During the 65-day period, a large percentage of, of the cash is invested in, among other things, tax-exempt municipal bonds. There are other scams we shall come to know, but before we examine them, there are business myths that throw a broad shadow which serves to conceal the depth and breadth of these deceptions and makes them more difficult to bring to light. Well, like I said before in other readings of this and other things, you and me win the lottery or say we become rock stars, which probably wouldn't happen. Or say you watching this become a sports star or something, you know, I don't know. You win the lottery or you get some kind of big thing, don't trust anybody. Says, oh yeah, you can, they see you got money if you're blingin'. Say, say you be blingin'. And uh, my thing would be is don't be blinking by getting fancy cars and all kind of bullshit. Because they see you blinking and you got money. They know the people that know less about investments. And all somebody really virtually has to do is dress some kind of way and say, Oh, I'm an investment person. I got this friend that's an investment person. And meanwhile, they're in cahoots. You know, they're along with their buddies trying to con you. And then you fall, Oh, investment. You know, I can throw a couple thousand or a couple million in there and it'll turn in. Four million turn into eighty million. Oh, I'm for that. And then they're st they steal you. Well, you know, I mean, that's with adding to this. You know, uh, of course they're going to take advantage of a lot of people. A lot of, like I said, celebrities. You look at about on YouTube they went broke, fell for investment scams. They may have been famous and rich, or they were just rich and ready to be taken. You know, like you know that saying. You know, a fool and his money are uh, soon parted, or whatever. Just as bad as the, the drug dealer uh, selling you a drug and saying it's going to mess things for you and it's going to bleed out all your money, you know, you get addicted to it. Well, you could get addicted to money to a point where you want more of it and you're going to fall for stupid things and get your money stolen. You know, all right. One of the largest myths is that business serves the consumer. Without your, your good, 
without your good, good without, um, excuse me, without your goodwill and purchase, they will be out of business. Well, a place that I worked for you when I made the big bucks making dock sale pads for uh, the trucks that, you know, the trucks pull up against the building, they pull up against the pads. I used to manufacture and make those. The big boss used to have announcements at the, the holiday parties and the pizza parties telling us without the customer, we're nothing. And that's still true. Some businesses without the customer, if nobody's buying your shit, you know, that's still true in some businesses. But then others, if they have control of a lot of things everybody's dependent on, the monopolies, it's a different story. You know, like, so, you know, what's in this book is still true, but yet it depends what business and what product they're controlling. You know. So, uh, business controls and virtually owns the consumer. Uh, this is accomplished by advertising that develops a need in the consumer for products that are not essential, or not necessarily essential, or always essential. Or they can make them essential. Or like, you know, anyway, like I said sarcastically in videos, nothing against any of you women watching, you like to wake up as part of a being girl, or now anything. But, you can really live out without makeup, they make it as, uh, makeup is actually an example. It's glamorized. You can live without it. A part of civilization collapsed and you only had to have some of the more basic needs. Uh, you never know. You might even be able to get more crafty and make up, make your own makeup out of something. I don't know. Who knows? You know, like those uh, uh, diehard nature. I'm being a little sarcastic here, but, well, that's one of the, there's like a lot of things like makeup. Then a lot of things for men that, not necessarily essential, you're not going to die without it, but they make it essential. I'm just adding to this. Not to go against the guy's argument in this book. Not to go against the author's argument, but... Uh, yeah, it's accomplished by advertising that develops the need for a consumer. The need by the consumer for products that are not essential, which they find a way to make essential. Well, they're doing that now with the pandemic. So. But uh, anyway, the pandemic that we're in right now while well, breathing is it's killing everybody's livelihood. So no matter what is essential or non-essential, people get end up losing their house and cars and not eating. But oh, that's a totally different argument altogether. But plus, I'm also reading this during a pandemic too because bored, you know, something to do and put on YouTube. So okay, okay, on with the, on with the reading. It develops a psychic. Uh, as well as a material hunger in the consumer that is addictive as well as narcotic. Make something, uh, make some, with a pandemic put aside, with there's no pandemic like it's going on now, uh, make something essential that ain't essential by getting addicted to it. You know, uh, the addiction, yeah, the addiction permits business to charge you what it wants, when it wants, or like we say, whatever they goddamn well feel like, or whatever they fucking well feel like, in our language. Whatever freedom of choice you think you have of, is an illusion. Therefore, we begin understanding that we are victims of business more than beneficiaries, or slaves, or hostages, depending on, you know, they control everything you need. We can start demystifying the deceptions. Well, geez, look, I'll bring up again the YouTube video, the story of your enslavement, you know, too. Uh, they cre have to create the illusion of freedom and the illusion of choice. And look at the videos of the late George Carlin. He said in a couple of his videos, uh, you may think you have a choice, but you don't. Uh, the game is rigged. They bought off the all the, uh, the Democrats, the Republicans, the Senate, the House, and blah, 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 you know. Uh, yeah, good old George. Uh, you gotta love him. He uh, he's still speaking to us from beyond the grave right now through his YouTube samples. Even or if you buy his DVD, imagine you buy his stuff on DVD. Somewhere. Anyway, that's the end of this book. I mean, not the end of this book, end of this chapter. Figure, yeah, these chapters are relatively from here to here. But like I said, I by the time I talk in the middle, but this video is what. See, I can see the timestamp on here. Pretty long, so I'm going to do another one after.